This video explains how to handle the error message error in model frame default frame must be a data frame in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you an example. And for this example, we first need to create two random data frames, as you can see in lines two to 13 of the code. So in lines two to six, I'm first creating some random variables. And then in line eight of the code, I'm creating our first data frame based on the first 50 values in these variables. So after running this line of code, a new data frame called data one is appearing at the top right. And we can print the first six rows of this data frame using the head function, as you can see in line nine of the code. And after running this line of code, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that the first six rows of our data frame are returned and that our data frame contains a target variable, which is called Y, and the three predictor variables X1, X2, and X3. Then in the next step, we also need to create a second data frame, as you can see in line 12 of the code. So after running this line of code, another data frame is appearing at the top right. And we can print the first six rows of this data frame as well by running line 13 of the code. And then you can see that our second data frame also contains a variable called Y, as well as a three predictors X1, X2, and X3. Now let's assume that we want to estimate a linear model based on our first data frame. Then we can apply the code that you can see in line 15. So in this line of code, I'm using the LM function and I'm applying this function to a model formula where we specify the variable Y as target variable and the other variables as predictors. And then I'm also specifying the name of the data frame that I want to use. So in this case, the data frame data one. And then I'm also storing the output of the LM function in a new model object that I'm calling my mod. So after running line 15 of the code, this new data object is appearing at the top right. And then I can apply the summary function to this model object, as you can see in line 16 of the code. And then you can see in the RStudio console that we have created a model output, which besides many other metrics shows the estimates for the predictors x1, x2, and x3, and the target variable y. Now let's assume that we want to apply the predict function to our second data frame based on the model that we have just estimated to get the predictions for the target variable y in our second data frame. Then we might try to apply the predict function as you can see in line 18 of the code. However, after running this line of code, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that the error message error in model.frame.default data must be a data frame environment or list is returned. And the reason for that is that we have not specified the entire data frame data to within the predict function, but only the column Y. So always make sure that you insert an entire data frame within the predict function when you want to create predictions for a second data frame. And we can do that as you can see in line 20 of the code. So as you can see in this line of code, I'm specifying the entire second data frame. And then I'm applying the predict function to our model and our second data frame. And I'm specifying that I want to store the results of the predict function in a new data object that I'm calling pred values two. So after running line 20 of the code, you can see that this new data object is appearing at the top right, and we can print the first six values in this data object using the head function, as you can see in line 21 of the code. And then you can see that we have created predictions for the target variable Y in the second data frame. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. 
Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.